Well, welcome to the very first edition of the Gibraltar Footy Show. I'm Steve Brown, and with me each week will be Adam Roberts. We're going to be chatting about everything to do with football on the rock. We'll be covering the first and the second division. We'll also be interviewing the managers, the players, the officials of each club. And we'll be chatting to those unsung heroes as well of what makes football great on the rock. So uh, this is the first edition of the Gibraltar Footy Show. Well, I'm chatting to uh, Adam Roberts, who's a bit of a football fanatic on the on the rock of Gibraltar. And uh, hopefully, Adam, this will be the, the first podcast of many during a, what should be a, a very interesting 2017-18 season. Yeah, it definitely will. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. And uh, well, we're going to kick off with the with the second division. Oh, they've they've played. Have they played two games so far this season? Yeah. Um, the problem with the second division is there's nine teams instead of ten. So we have eight teams play while one while one team has a bye. Yeah. So one team's like always always catching up, but that's just just how it is. And they've they've kicked off a, a week before the the first division. Is that true? Um, no. The if I my memory. Is correct. I think the Premier kicked everything off with the second division just like a day later. Right. And then since then, the, there's been a lot more second division than Premier. Yeah, because I'm, I'm looking at the second division and uh, it looks like uh, Bo- Boca Juniors have got off to a real start. Yeah, they've done. They've done very well. They started off as a as a friends as a club created by friends, and then last season they kind of just had enough of being just. No, there was no, what you could say, there was no um, commitment in that club. It was all friends of friends, so when they trade, when they felt like it, etc., yeah. etc. But so what, last year, sorry, last year they had, they, they knuckled down and, and were, very, were a very good team. Do you know any players that have uh, joined the club during the summer, or is it just the nucleus of uh, the ones that were there prior, you know, before? Yeah, the the manager one who is um who used to be the fitness coach of Lions in the Premier. Right. And he's and he's come in and, and done a very good job at the team. He's um <laughs> he brought he's brought in his his players that he knew obviously from Spain and, and added some, some real good talent yeah. over the summer. It sounds like if he's a fitness coach, it sounds like he's been whipping them into shape. Yeah, they they should they should be the, the fittest team in the league by, by a mile. And of course, uh uh, Cannon, uh, Cannon FC. Do you know much about them? They're currently second in the uh, in uh, second division. Yeah, they've been they've been the Gibraltar's whipping boys for for a good few seasons now. But um, again, they got tired of being taken uh, taken for a ride, and now yeah, again they they're probably the dark horses of the league. You could say. Well, they had a good three-two victory over College uh, nineteen seventy-five, so not a bad result last week. No, at all. They've they've improved. They've improved majorly over from last season to now. They brought. They've got some good players, and obviously the manager. They're just adding to it, which is which is good to see. Yeah, is there uh, is there any money in the game at, at that level, Adam? How how's it work financially? Are, are, are players being paid? Are they getting some kind of uh, incentives to join these football clubs? Um, for the lower teams, it's almost the manager is asking his, his asking his teammates and his teammates asking his friends. Yeah. But in the in the bigger teams in the second division, there's there's no money there and, and quite a lot of it, to be honest. Right, it's surprising, isn't it? That you know you've got a second tier and uh, there's money knocking around. Yeah, I know. It, but it, like you said, it, it's not. I wouldn't say every team. As you could probably say about two or three teams who have just. To be honest, just started recently. Just this season, started paying their players, giving their players a bit of initiative to to commit more to the game. And you can see, you could, you can see the level, different level. Dero, hey, we're in, we're in the wrong game, sir, aren't we? We're... Yeah, I know. I think I, should, I think I should start. I should go we, back to the second division. We should be playing. Yeah, I know. You're looking at the level of it. We can probably still do, still do, still do a good job. Yeah. Well, I, I was chatting to uh, Dave Wilson from the Magpies, and uh, you know he's got great uh, aspirations for this season. But they uh, they got a bit of a kicking, didn't they? Yeah, they. they de- I could say they're definitely not the same team that I've been enjoying watching over over the last few seasons. What is, what is it? Because by all accounts, from what I was, I was chatting to Dave, is uh, they brought a few players in. Uh, yeah, they brought in some some real good talent. They brought in Cherma, who's been in Jib for a few seasons now, same as their striker Fernando. But 
I don't know. They're just definitely a, the same team I, I was yeah. watching last season. Yeah, I know it's early days, but you, uh, I'd be expecting them. I know that last season, I think they did they only lose one or two games for the entire season. Yeah, and then and they made they got their way into the playoffs where they where they lost to Manchester City two three yeah. one. Yeah. Looking at the just finishing off with the the second division, uh, Adam. What what do you who do you think are going to be the wooden spoon? Who are going to be the whipping boys this season, as far as you're concerned? Whipping boys, I, I think you've got to you've got to say it's it's hound dogs. They're they're a very young squad. They've got I think the average age is between eighteen and twenty two. Yeah, probably. But I wouldn't be surprised if it's lower. They're a very young team, but then yeah. I, I'm very in contact with with the with the board members of of Ham Dogs and right. they they're wanting to bring up the youth, give them a chance. But looking at what Premier teams are not yeah. doing at the moment, and I don't think they might, obviously no team wants to get whipped. But no, I think they they've got a good moral too. But I, I think you've got. I, well, I was just going to come on to that, Adam. The fact that you know Ham Dog are, are willing to give local talent uh, an opportunity to play some football. They're wrong. That's got to be commended, hasn't it? Yeah. I've spoke. I I'm always in contact with Chris and and Urge, and they're they're always bringing in new talent, and they've got talent. Obviously, their their friends have seen have seen their friends playing in Hound Dogs, and obviously, look, they're not getting a game. We let's just go to Hound Dogs, and and we're gonna learn learn a lot there. Dave was was saying he he reckons FC uh, Olympic could be a team to watch this season. Uh, what do you what do you think to that one? Yeah, obviously, if you're looking at their squad, they've got some some cracking players. They've got Jamie Bosio, Alan Parker. All these players are Robert Montovio. Of yes. course, everyone everyone knows him. They've some got, real talent. Then. They've got premier premier established players. But at the moment, I, I was watching them watching them, and they put in a good a good shift against Boca. Yeah. But right now, they're they're just eleven individuals on the pitch. They haven't quite grasped the the teamwork yet. I suppose that'll come in the. During the season, how many games did they play in uh, in the second division over the over the space of a a campaign? It's two rounds, so you're looking at sixteen games. Yeah, and then you've got like the cup games as well. I, I suppose yeah, thrown in. Got um, the well, last season it was the Chesterton's Cup. I'm not I'm not a hundred percent if they've they've stayed it on for for this season. Yeah, and then you've got of course the the Rock Cup. Yeah, I'm well, just looking at the goal scorers as well. Uh, is it Valdivia who's uh, yeah, the, he scored he five? For, scored five for La, for La Valona in Spain in the in the youth ranks. He's I, I've spoken to a few people. And he's definitely one player that we didn't. I don't know much about, him, but I have been told that he's one that's gonna gonna score score many goals this season. Yeah, how does it work with the with the transfer uh, market over there? Can can players be signed at any opportunities, or have you got to wait for the for the window to open? If you're an, if you're getting an amateur, amateur contract, you can you can only be signed within the transfer window. But right. if you give, if you're giving them a professional contract, they can sign they can sign whenever they want. But they have to be a free agent if I'm if I'm correct. Right. How many how many people have got contracts out there then? Is it is it quite a, <sighs> is there quite a few think, contracts knocking around? <laughs> oh, there's way too many. And I'm, I'm looking at the players that have contracts. I think you'd be you'd be very surprised. Dear oh dear. Yeah. So it it's certainly uh the league, you know, both the second division and the first division, they they're both on the up, aren't they? Yeah, the second division has has improved majorly over the last few years and and to be honest, I think this season you could be looking at the second division being a, mo- a lot more a lot more better than the than the Premier. Yeah. How long how long have you been involved in the journalistic side of things out there on the rock, Adam? How long have you been a part of this... it? This is now my my fourth season. Are you loving it? Yeah, I, it's it's what I love doing. That's why I, I put so much time into it. Because you're involved with. Are you involved with uh, football Gibraltar at all? Are you still doing stuff for them? Yeah, it's my. Um, I was very shocked that it was my um, my friend growing up. We known each other as kids, and yeah. I, I'd always knew about the page, but I never had a clue who, who ran it. Yeah. And then four years ago, I it was only my, it was a. It was my childhood friend that, that started up. Brilliant, because it's a fantastic platform that you guys put together, isn't it? And it it's you know it, it's full of football from every single football club. Yeah, my my friend started up about five six years ago, and obviously built 
build a platform for it. And then me and, and a couple of people came in and with the uh, with the knowledge of the of the leagues because he was in uni at the time when he was when he was do running it. I came in, had have obviously had the knowledge of the of how the league was working, etc. And we've just gone from strength to strength since then. Yeah, it's been absolutely brilliant. Well, the first divi- the first divisions kicked off and uh, a good first result as you would expect for uh, for the imps. Yeah, they were. Wouldn't say it was. They didn't start off the greatest of teams. Obviously, they're missing a lot, a lot of the players. So you would expect them to be to be a lot better once their once their main guys come in. Yeah, or come back. Sorry. Is that what's happened there? Is that is that kind of the international uh, break colliding with the start of the league season? Yeah, that was that was quite annoying, really. Where the why would you know, why would they, why would they do that? Politics, concerts, <laughs> or everything. It's not been really. You know, we can say that, we can get away with it because it's not really been planned right, has it? No, at all. There were so many problems with the with the concerts and then when we did manage to get the league's date... It was changed, everyone, weren't it? All the Premier, yeah, it's been changed to and from and, you don't know, there's just so many so many problems that it just kept on getting delayed. But for you personally, how, how do you see this season going? Pretty much in the same vein as last season with uh, Europa and... Imps fighting it out, or do you think? Uh, yeah, I, or do you think jo- Saint Joseph's will be in there? Personally, I think Lincoln will will take it this this year. I've seen. I went to a Europa press conference and I explained when I spoke to the president. I told him if he felt he's going to fall through the same trap Lincoln did when they when they uh, sold Liam and didn't replace him properly. And I think Europa have fallen in that same trap. They def- they definitely don't look the same team they did when Liam was around. No, because when you start talking about Liam Walker, I've followed him since he joined joined up with Knox County, and uh, you can tell straight away why uh, Kevin Nolan got him to uh, sign on the dotted line, can't you? Well, of course. Technically, I've said it many a time. Technically, he's the best in he's the best in Gibraltar. Yeah, but they haven't. But as you were saying, Europa haven't haven't cashed signed someone new. No, at all. I don't think they've uh, they've replaced him properly and. I have a feeling they're gonna they're gonna fall in the same trap as as Lincoln did. They might have tried to get Borden to sign for him. <laughs> yeah, they, I know that. I know they spoke to to a few a few good uh, Premier players, but obviously none of that really worked out. And now they're given a chance to to Sykes, Mikey, and, and Ethan Jolly to to fight it out for Liam's spot, well, yeah. the whole grown spot. But you could probably say it was Liam's. So what what's happening with Europa? Because you know, I, I went to watch the. Uh, I came over last year to just watch the the derby clash between, well, between Imps and and Europa. I think it was, I think it was actually Imps that went in. I think they were leading at half time, and then Europa came out and had a really good sterling uh, second half performance. Yeah, I think I rem- I remember the one where where it ended four one. I think it was. Yeah, that was the one. I think it was yeah. one one nil at half time. Yeah, Europa went in at uh, uh, one nil. Sorry, and then <coughs> whatever Julio. Told his players at halftime what because they were oh, they were completely a different team in the second half and just tore tore Europa to pieces. But then after that, I thought that they'd just kick on and and and, and finish the season. But it it kind of there was a twist and turns, weren't they, at the back end of that season that uh, you know opened the door for Europa. Yeah, I think everyone expected. I think probably Europa expected to kick on and, and win it from there. But lapses in concentration and tiredness, you got to think. A lot of the Gibraltar senior team is made up of of Lincoln players. Yeah, a lot more players than it than every other team has. So I think fatigue was a was a massive part of last season, which which made them lose the the lead to Europa. Yeah, I think from from my point of view, from kind of a an outsider looking in, I think the majority of of people that I know are imp supporters due to the fact that the vast majority, as you say, are local talent. Yeah, it's been it's been great to see the locals. The locals getting the game. Hopefully, well, I think the homegrown player rule is looking to to be um, extended, and when that does, we'll see a lot. Uh, hopefully, our senior team or, and our under twenty one team and so on getting yeah. getting a lot better. Yeah, but it, it's got it's got to. I, I think it's got to happen, uh, Adam, due to the fact that you've got to protect the the youth on the rock, and they've got to be playing football in order for the national team to uh, you know to flourish. Yeah, but at the same time, the locals they you could say they're they're happy to sit on the bench. I know I've spoken to a few a few presidents from the lower down teams who've tried to get the the youth to come down to their team where you know you're going to play minutes. But yeah, 
they're just happy to to get their paycheck at the end of the month oh, and sit oh, down on the bench. Totally the wrong attitude to have. It is when you're trying to uh, maybe forge your career and and get a get yourself a national team shirt. Exactly, that's exactly what it is. But like I said, they're just happy to to get their get their large amount of money at such yeah. a young age. Yeah, and just sit on the bench for it. Well, just focusing on them top two sides of Europa and Imps, have have Imps brought any new acquisitions in during the uh, during the summer period? Is there any new any new faces around the place? Yeah, there have been a few. There's a, been a few that that have impressed me. I know um, we know Anthony Hernandez and and Jason Pusey went to them early on in the summer, and they brought in as well Oli. He's a, a Spanish centre back who's been who's been very good, and as well their striker Fallu. He's maybe not the quickest, but he definitely has got some strength. Yeah, and what he loses in his feet, he's got he's got the power in his head, and the uh, you know he's, he can think like five steps in front of everyone else, like a Teddy Sheringham. Yeah, definitely. He's he's literally bullying defenders. He's almost you could almost say he's like <laughs> a Diego Costa, except for the for the attitude problem. But looking at some of the other sides, uh, well, look at we'll stay with Europa because have they brought any new faces in? Have they brought any any more Spaniards uh, into the club? Yeah, they brought in um, they brought in a own centre back CDM um, Jose. He's he used to play for Los Barrios. Right. They brought in as well Hall Gavina. He's very experienced. I've been told he was the one that was supposed to be Walker's replacement. And as well Nito. Nito was in the if I'm correct, he was in the under twenty one squad for Spain in the same team with um, Andres Iniesta. Right. Or Barcelona. So bags of experience then. Eh? Yeah, experienced, but. Obviously, the experience isn't doing too well for them at the moment. No. Talking about the financial aspect of the the first division, what from what you hear on you know ear to the ground, what what kind of wages are, are these players on? Oh, they're, they're a lot more money than than there has been recently, and it keeps getting better. We know there's there's certain players, you know, I don't want to say names, but there's there's certain players on. You're looking at two five, two thousand five hundred, two thousand. Certain players on on you reported to be four grand, and then obviously four. from there you go. What low, four low. four grand a month, of course. Four grand a month, yeah. Playing not, in Gibraltar, it's not bad, is it? <laughs> stealing a living, if you're telling me. Absolutely stealing a living. I tell you, we we're 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 in the wrong. We're certainly in the wrong job if if someone's picking up four thousand pound for uh, playing a for couple playing of ga- playing a couple of games with a cigar in his mouth and slippers on. <laughs> yeah, I know it's it's a crazy amount of money. I, personally, I think it's obviously too much money to do, especially when you're playing in yeah. in a league like Gibraltar. And I suppose going back to one of your initial points about the youth and about some of these kids willing to sit on the bench, you know, if they're picking up, say, maybe in the region of a five, let's say they're on like between five hundred and one thousand five hundred per per calendar month. Yeah. Then, of course, these young kids, they're going to sit on bench all season, aren't they? Yeah, exactly, and that's what they are doing, and that's what they continue to do. If the club that wants them can't can't match their wages, yeah. And the worst thing is that they're still they're still getting into the into their respective national youth group. So they're not losing when you think about it. Okay, they might not be playing. They're still getting five, six, seven hundred pound a month. And they're still getting into the national team because they're one of yeah. the best at their age. Yeah. Where if, so, where if, what's the point? Where if the where if the you know the, the kind of criteria to get into a national team is that you've got to play regular first team football, then oh, it then it then, it then it then it makes it slightly different, and there's more incentive to get your shirt on and get your boots on and and put a shift in. Yeah, exactly. But hey, if, when you think about it, there. They're just happy to sit, like I said. They're just happy to sit on the bench, and they're going to get, and they're going to get picked for the national get, team anyway. Exactly, and still getting their money. So, why would they want to go anywhere else? But if that that happens, as you know, Adam, it, the the league or the national game is not going to improve. It's not, and it's it's something that's quite worrying, really. I don't know what's going to happen, but uh, looking at some of the other sides, looking at the likes of uh, Gibraltar United. Phoenix, what do you know about them two? Um, Gibraltar United, I've been working with um, closely over the, over the summer, and they've brought in some some real good talent. They've um, they've obviously, as everyone knows, they they signed a link with um, Michel Salgado, the Real Madrid and Spanish Spanish yeah. legend. Yeah, 
He's brought in players he knows from an academy he has in Dubai. They, they, I know they arrived just, just a few weeks ago. And then it's just his friends who run, who run academies are, are giving their players and they've, they're doing very well at the moment. See, it's brilliant to have you know people like Salgado involved uh, with the league on the rock. But what do you, you know, if you had to put your finger on it, you know, uh, what do you, what do you think his incentive is um, to come to, you know, no disrespect, but to come to the rock to a small league? What does he get from this? Yeah, I know it's, it's actually quite crazy that he he put his time into into, into yeah. this league. Because obviously, with the kind of stature he has, you would expect him to go to to a different league. But I know Paul Callado, the pres the president of Gibraltar United, was working hard over over the over these last few months, and and now Michel's come in, learned the ways of the club, and and he's doing a lot, not just in the senior level, but he's doing a very good. He's very doing very well in the youth as well, which is Brilliant. very important. Well, it is. I, I suppose if some of the the young local talent's going to be benefiting from Salgado's training and his uh, philosophy on football, then uh, it's all better going forward for the national team as well, isn't it? Yeah, of course. He's he's, he's, he's showing the the youth, look, if you want to be professional like me, you have to do this like me. And yeah. it's up to the parents and the kids if they want to be the best, if they want to make football their, their job growing up, then this is the... Oh, the perfect opportunity. So he's certainly setting the standards for professionalism. Yeah, definitely, and that's something that's been lacking in in Gibraltar football. And it's great to see see it being pushed into the into the clubs now. Fantastic, uh, Phoenix. What about Phoenix? Um, yeah, I'm very close again. I'm very close with uh, their president Brian Brosco. I was I was having a coffee with him a few weeks ago, and we were having this same chat because I wonder about Phoenix. They were just so so quiet over the. Over the summer period, by looking at their first game against Montscalpe, which is not a very, which is a very difficult game for any team, mm. and they they played very well. I know they've got um, a good few, few Premier experience. Um, Dean Torija, he, they got him on loan. Jamin Venent as well. Bekas is another seems to be the centre back of Europa, and then I know the managers put in um, Jaime Molina, I think his name is, and he's he's brought in some. Second division and third division of of Spanish players, and yeah. they they're doing very well at the moment. Well, it's not bad to say that they were only, or reading reports, they were only re- only formed back in two thousand and eleven. So yeah, this is their second their, their second time in, in Premier as well. Obviously, the, the first one didn't go well whatsoever. Don't, they didn't pick up a point and just were getting smashed every single weekend. Yeah, and what about the Lions? Because they they had a a good result. They had a, a win in their first match. Yeah, the the biggest shock so far. It's only a few games into it, but I don't think anyone except expected Lions to do what they did. But they put in they put in an excellent performance. They're, I'm a very big fan of their manager Rafa Vado, who played for the Gibraltar national team ever since he came in. I think it was about two seasons ago. He's I've been a fan of his. I think everything he does, defending wise, is is perfect. And like I said, they they did very well. The keeper, you could say, the keeper of Europa was at fault for both goals, both of long range efforts. But again, not not to take anything away from Lions, they were they were very very good on the night. And who who've, who've they brought in over the uh, over the summer? Have they brought any new faces in to strengthen the squad for this campaign? Again, it's Rafa's Rafa's come in and brought in players that he knows from from his time in Spain, from the players that have come from Jib. I know they brought in a few from. From glasses, yeah. But again, he's he's looked at, at players he he knows in in Spain and has brought them with him. And just moving down the list, uh, Saint Joseph, you know, the first time in European competition uh, didn't work out how they how they wanted it to, but it, it was a great achievement for them, weren't it? Yeah, yeah. Obviously, no, I don't think anyone expected Saint Joseph to uh, to get any type of result, but I think just. For them, participating in that, yeah, amazing. In that European competition is is perfect enough for them. And hope, hopefully, they'll be able to use that now as a mm-hmm. as a springboard going forward. Yeah, they they should they push on. They're going some some good some good players in over the summer, and now they'll 
they expected the hope in the sorry to hope in to uh, push on from here and and break the, the link in the top two. And what about Mons Kalpi and uh, Manchester sixty two? What's uh, what's been happening in, uh, during their pre season? Um, I know Mons Kalpi have, um, have brought in. They've lost a lot of a lot of um, local players, which is which isn't very good for no for the club, but. I know they've got some. They went to a two-week training camp in in Barcelona, put in some some good performances there, and obviously their first game didn't quite go to plan. They, they lost their midfielder Sasha early on, and then they got their captain sent off. But I think this is just a, a minor hiccup. I think they'll they'll uh, they'll fight back and they'll have and a good season. Why, why they're such a good such a good team? Yeah, and links, of course. Uh... Mr. Hallam Buller back in the arena. Yeah, he's back in. He's back in the local game. Should be. Which I think is absolutely brilliant. No, he, he's by far the the best manager in Gibraltar, local manager, right now, and it should be interesting to see how he how he competes in the in the Gibraltar league. Yeah, because I was I was watching a couple of interviews with uh, the Neville brothers, and uh, okay. and Phil Neville, I think, did his. Uh, FA coaching badges with Alan, and he were talking about, you know, he were really putting him on a pedestal and and saying how good he was as a a tactician and a and a national team coach. Yeah, hey, he's a, he's an excellent coach, and to be honest, I I think he should he should still have, still be the the national team manager. But again, that's nothing I what, can I can't come on. What, what do you think? What do you think's going to uh, happen? Do you if let's just say hypothetically. If if Alan was kind of persuaded to take the job again, do you think uh, he'd go for it? Oh, he would. I I spoke to him just before the before the season started, and he said, "If you can't, if the if the if your country comes calling, you can't turn it down, you can can't, you? Can't you can't say no." Do you think there's going to be some, you know, and you personally? Uh, I know what you know. We, what we've spoke about on social media over the last uh, two days or so, but. Would you like to see some changes now that the uh, the conclusions come to the World uh, World Cup qualifiers? Yeah, I, I I made it clear on on Twitter yesterday that things need to change and they need to change now. You can't blame the the players for anything. They put in a good showing. You're playing in in the big boy league, and yeah. uh, everyone is faster than you, stronger than you. But what you can't do in attack, you have to make up in the back and. I don't think that's been the case for for them this this campaign. No, because you know we've spoken about it on several occasions, and I just you know when I look at Alan's team, when I look at uh, you know Dave Wilson's side, I saw attacking formations. I saw Gibraltar wanting to have a go, wanting to give the opposition a bit of a nosebleed. I've seen none of that while Wood's been in charge. It's been it's it's very it's so difficult with with Gibraltar. You you haven't got a large pool of players. If if one gets injured, it's it's so difficult to replace him with with another. But yeah, I think um, going forward, like I said, things need to change. Personally, if there is going to be a next manager, I I I'm a strong believer that it has to be come from foreign. Like I said, favoritism is something that's been. Been troubling Gibraltar's senior squads for for many years now, mm. and I think if you bring in a, a foreign manager, he hasn't got a clue about the local game. No, and he has got to sit there like a manager should do every local every Premier game, whether there's one local in the team or if there's eleven, the manager should be in the stands watching every single game. Yeah, and and learning what he can make sure every player has is on an even playing field. Which, to be honest. I don't think you have that right now in the squad. No. Like you say, if you're going to have a manager, the manager's got to be eat, sleeping and breathing the local game. Yeah, exactly. And like He's got to be there in every game, every and, single game. And it's not just that. It's it's the mentality of uh, the game. You know, he's got to understand every single like facet of uh, the way things happen on the rock. Yeah, obviously Jeff's Jeff, obviously Jeff's no uh, no stranger to Gibraltar. He's been here many a time. I remember when he was when he was in he evolved in the in the GFA when I was a kid. Yeah, went away, came back, 
joined Lions and then after Lions got the job at, at Gibraltar. But there's been, uh, uh, you know, me personally, I'm talking from my personal view. What, what I've seen during the qualifying campaigns, I've seen glimpses of some really, really good football because we all know that technically the, the players on the rock are very, very good. But it, it's kind of having that, that real spine in the team. You know, once you you know you look at the likes of Roy Cipollina, but then you look at after Roy Cipollina, who have we got who uh, strong and hard who can put up a fight? Exactly that, and that's what everyone is making making their point now about it. And at the moment, I think whoever's going to come in is going to have a big problem when those when those uh, when the seniors leave, like Roy, yeah. Lee Casiaro, Ryan, when those guys leave. I think we've got a massive, massive problem on our hands. But I would love to see people like Roy Cipollina, uh, you know, even Walker, and the other, like you said, the other, the other pros who are coming to the end of their careers, taking up coaching roles. Go and get the badges, send them out, get them, get the, get the coaching badges, so they can come back and nurture the next generation of local talent on the rock. Yeah, I'm being, I've been watching. Obviously, with social media, we're always talking to all the clubs, and now the players are starting to. Uh, take up coaching at, at the lower levels get used to it and then from then if they decide to once they decide to step out of the or play in the game they know that they they can go straight into the yeah. coaching and they've got the experience they have been over the last few years to to maybe take it seriously and, and make make a name for themselves yeah. in the in the managerial world because I know a few of them and I know like the GFA have been working closely with the the Welsh FA is that right? Yeah, they signed a, a, a five-year partnership, I believe, for sending coaches over there to to get, and that's what's needed. Certainly is. I'm going to uh, last point. I want to pick up. It's been absolutely brilliant over the last 24 hours. What about the under 21s? What a result! Oh, unbelievable. I, I was I was out. The story. The story a, of the year. The story of the year. Yeah, it was it was ridiculous. Like I was saying, I was out, I was out having a having a coffee with some friends, and and my my phone wouldn't stop going off, and I was wondering wondering what happened. And then I then I saw that Gibraltar had won their first point, and oh, it was incredible. But it just it just shows that with the right you know the the right coaching, the right togetherness, the support, you know them coaches who have been coaching them guys for several years now. They deserve tremendous credit for doing that. No, yeah, I, I know I'm friends with many many of the players in that squad, and I know them, I know them on and off the pitch. And I was speaking to a few of them after the game, and I don't think they they quite believed it at first. I think it was there was almost speak to me in the morning because I can't believe what's just happened. Yeah, but it does just show that even though a nation of twenty five thousand people against a nation of Two million. If you've got the right team spirit, anything could be achieved. Yeah, definitely. We've showed we've showed in in previous games that that, that we've got something going. I know the um, last last campaign we we got a point at, at Liechtenstein. Yeah. Coming into coming into this campaign, obviously more games against Serbia. We know Serbia are are much better than us. We we've seen them over the years. And I think the three 0 to Russia that was a, that was a very good result, and now this now to manage to get a win over Macedonia is incredible. And I spoke with the the scorer Graham, and he's he can't <laughs> believe it either. He's, I bet he's he buzzing, isn't it? I bet he's buzzing. Yeah, he's just everyone is everyone sending him <laughs> messages of support, and he almost feels like a like a national hero. You could say. Well, he is. He is a national hero, and he should be very proud. <laughs> him, him and his family should be very proud of him. Yeah, now it's hopefully now you are now everyone's asking questions. Why, why isn't he getting a look into the senior team? Well, I, if I, he's the cat, how is the captain of? I'm not saying I'm not going on a rant or anything, but no. if he's if he's the captain of the under twenty ones, why is he getting? It should why be, is he not having a look into the senior team? Well, exactly. If he's knocking on the door, why you know why is he not even like getting a getting a run out maybe on the bench so he can soak up the. Uh, the atmosphere and the experience of being a full international. Exactly, but like I said, there's there's many problems within the the national setup which need changing before the the nations league mm. next next year. But hopefully, if they can keep the nucleus of this squad together at under twenty one level, 
and take them forward and get them some coach and maybe send them out to academies through Europe, which would be uh, the next kind of step. As you know, if 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 I was coaching, I'd be wanting to send some of these guys out to get some real experience and then bring them back, keep them together, and then kick on and give them full caps. Yeah, bring taking them to academies where where they're going to get experience is definitely needed, especially at such a young age. You don't have, you don't kind of get. You won't get that kind of opportunity in jib. So, well, like I said, going going abroad is is definitely what they need to do. I've spoken to um, um, uh, there's a good friend of mine who's the second keeper at Millwall. Yeah. And I've spoke to him, and and like I said, he says if you if you're if you're focused, you have to go. You've got to go abroad. Well, just before we finish, just looking at some of the games that are going to be played uh, this week in the first division. I know we've got St. Joseph's versus Glasses United. How do you see that going, Adam? Um, St. Joseph should should win again. They've got a very good team. I was watching Glasses against Lincoln and they they just struggled from you they probably gave a good good first five, ten minutes and then after that it was just Lincoln were all over them and they couldn't really get out the blocks after that. Yeah. So you, you reckon St. Joseph's will uh, pick up three points from that one, do you? Yeah, they, they should do. What about, favorites. what about Lynx versus Lions? What about that one? That's going to be a tough game. It's going to be a very... See what happens there. Obviously, looking at, at Lions, how they did against Europa, they, they you'll probably put them as favourites to, to win that game. Yeah, they're going to be full of confidence going into that. But when you've got uh, Mr. Alan Buller orchestrating things from the side, uh, there's no certainties, is there? Not at all. They, Lynx, Lynx put in a very good shift against Gibraltar United when... Going in nil nil at half time, but after that, it kind of just went uh, went a bit funny. After that, you could say. <laughs> a bit pear shaped. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What about Manchester versus uh, Gibraltar United? Yeah, Gibraltar. Like um, Manchester were very quiet over the over the summer. The, the, the they had eight players in their their starting lineup that played St Joseph's. Eight of them were from the same team that played last season. So the nucleus is there, but. I just think they're they're going to struggle, and you probably my favourites to to get relegated this season. And uh, final looking at the Sunday uh, Sunday the fifteenth six uh, six thirty kick off, Phoenix versus Imps. That is going to be a very good game, I can say. Phoenix put in a put in an excellent shift as we said earlier, and that's one game I'm definitely I'm definitely looking forward to watching. I'm going to say, do you manage to get to most of the games? Will you be at, do you get your fair share of games in during the week? Yeah, it's me and me and my friend share, but I, I like to cover at least four of the five five Premier games. Brilliant. Well, it's a pleasure. Our first ever show. Done. Yeah, it's done. Been great. I'm looking forward to to the next one. Already. Done and dusted, mate. We'll uh, we'll get some of our features planned for uh, the coming weeks. Get some quizzes out there as well for some of the supporters, and uh, we'll put the feelers out and uh, make this a regular uh, weekly and slot. Push on, push on from here. Cheers, Adam. Yeah, thank you very much.